good afternoon. Let's all stand. Let's greet one another. And we're going to sing This is the Day, page 359 in our hymnals. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let's sing it one more time. This is the day, this is the day the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us pray. I dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Just thank you for the many blessings you've given us, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this time of being in service with you, Lord. And I pray that you put your hand on this church and put your hand on our staff, Lord, as it is. As this time goes on, and Lord, I just pray for our vacation Bible school that's coming up tomorrow, and Lord, just be with each and every one of the children, and Lord, I just pray that you be with all the leaders that are going to be teaching, and even the ones that are in the kitchen, Lord. Lord, just go with us now in this time of our service, just to help us to, to praise your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn is uh, page 407, Because He Lives. Sing the second and last verses. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to Next hymn, let's turn to page 550. I'd rather have Jesus. Page 550. Jesus 
Turn to page 254.
It's good to be back. Amen, man. Ready for this this week? VBS. Need a little interaction tonight? Tell me something that you love that's cold. I mean, mine would be I love ice cold glass of milk. What do you like that's that's cold? Ice cream with cold chocolate syrup over it. Watermelon. Mmm. Plain old cold water. Cold water. Yeah. What do you like that's, that's hot? I mean, hot. Hot chocolate, coffee, anything. Well, just like, Ryan, how many, how many people are cold in here? Well, I'm shocked. Other than one. How many were cold this morning? We were having a discussion. Because I was buzzing around this morning. I hit that thermostat over here because it's Terry's fault. He was up here going, like, I, I got you. I ran over there and I'm like, woof. I'm going to put that down to 68. We'll get 68 air blowing it. And about that time, you hear that. <laughs> so Terry was nice enough to bump it up. 69. So how many of y'all like lukewarm stuff? Not so much. You either like it cold or hot. In the summertime, you want iced tea. But some people like to drink hot tea in the summertime. Or hot coffee in the summertime. You know, in the wintertime, you want that hot, you don't want cold cocoa. You know, you don't want a cold fire, looking at those burnout logs. You want a hot, roaring fire. And I just want to lift you up for those VBS people and those who are praying. This is what it's going to be about. It's in Revelation 3.15. Many of you have memorized it. Many of you have scanned through it. Some of you might have actually read it. We're going to try to discuss it tonight. But it's Jesus Christ talking to the church of Laodicea. In Revelation, he, he's, he's revealing to them. And he says some very prominent things. I'm going to try to give it to you in little bite size. I was telling the story. I went to the movies the other day, and I ordered a, a chocolate chip cookie. And it came out, and there was two of them in there, and a friend next to me got his, and I reached in there, and I got mine. I, I figured for six bucks, it'd be this big, and I'd have to cut it with a machete. And it came out, as like, and so I literally sat and nibbled. I'm like, and then a crumb fell on the table, and you're right. I got that crumb. That's a $6 crumb, man. I'm going after it. And I was, I was, and it was, it was warm, but it wasn't hot. You know, it was kind of that mid-stage, mid-goo. You could break it and kind of, and I got it all. I got every bit of it, man. But in, in our journey in life, sometimes, let me just tell you, for VBS, it's, it's one or the other, folks. Either you need to be on fire for VBS or ice cold. There's going to be no lukewarm helpers here for VBS. No lukewarm kitchen workers saying, eh, what's for, what are you going to feed the kids? Peanut butter and crackers. Well, what's tomorrow? Crackers and peanut butter. Yes. Like it or leave it. There's going to be no lukewarm, hey, take it or leave it. There's going to be no lukewarm, that's the best you get, oh, ho, hum. Either you are on fire, raging inferno, blazing for the, for the Lord, or you're ice cold. And I say that because right here in Revelation 3.15, well, I'm going to do 14. To the angel of the church of Laodicea, right, Jesus speaking. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Verse 15, I know, Jesus talking, so I know your deeds. He's talking to you individually. I know your deeds. He's not grouping you together, the good with the bad. He's saying you as individuals, I know your deeds, you, that, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. I wish you were either one or the other. And I, I think we can all say that's my heart's prayer for every one of you, for me, for us. We either need to be hot or cold, period. Because lukewarm means, eh. Hey, somebody got an iPhone or if you got your Webster Dictionary, look up the, the word lukewarm and read the definition, somebody. Just raise your hand when you got it done. Lukewarm. Because I don't want a lukewarm shower. I want an ice cold shower in the summer and a hot shower in the winter. I don't want a lukewarm meal. 
I want a hot meal, piping hot, peel the flesh off the top palate hot. I want, I want things that are either or, but to be lukewarm? Jesus Christ is saying to individuals, oh, Carissa, lukewarm. Only moderately tepid. Should be hot, but it's only moderately tempered. Okay, anybody else have a different definition? Timothy. Unenthusiastic. Can you picture that? Eeyore. Eeyore was lukewarm. What was his phrase? Oh, bother. Guess I'll go to VBS. They'll have those cheese balls again. Maybe some pigs in the blanket if the pastor hasn't eaten them all. Oh, bother. That's lukewarm. That's lukewarm. I, I just wonder, do you want a lukewarm pe person up here singing or speaking? Okay. Terry was hot. Turn with me to Revelation. We'll see if God can reveal himself to us tonight. You don't want that. You don't want a teacher like that. You don't want a student. You don't want a spouse. You don't want a child that's lukewarm. You want somebody that's on or off, hot or cold, up or down, but lukewarm, and Jesus is trying to get it through our little thick heads. I wish you were one or the other. I wish you were excited for me or didn't like me at all. But don't be, well, I'm a Christian on Sunday because I'm supposed to be. And when we see that video again next week when you can actually see it, and it's titled, Oh Christian, you can go on Sermon Spice and buy it for $19.98 or view it. You'll understand what it means, oh Christian. Why do you go to church instead of being the church? Are you carrying somebody's burden or are you the burden? I mean, tough, tough questions. And we've got to look inside ourselves and go, why do we have VBS? Well... That's what we do at Calvary. Once a year, we spend a lot of money and don't see any results, but that's what we Baptists do. I said that's why we don't see any results, because that's why a lot of churches are quit doing VBS. Well, we haven't seen any practical out outcome after it. We haven't seen anything fruitful afterwards. Where does Jesus tell us that we're going to see the fruit? He said, plant the fruit seeds and I'll grow them. He didn't say we were going to see him. We've talked about that. Thousands have died without seeing the accomplishment of the mission. Our mission is to be sowers of seeds. Through VBS, we are sowing Jesus Christ. To some kid or kids that might not ever darken their doorstep, and better yet, to a parent that might not ever hear about Jesus until their child comes home with some little trinket from the circus. And a scripture verse on it. Look what I got at VBS today. Look what they told me. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Anybody know what Hebrews 11.1? 1? There's, a, there's a hint up here. But anybody just real quick? We might want to learn it. We might want to learn it. Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's kind of important. And you think about that. Hmm? Did somebody say it? I don't know. It's a hint for somebody to say it if they go to their Bible and open up to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Yes, young man. Come on. And the evidence of things not seen. I know we want to see this huge harvest of people, but what is that scripture? We might not ever see it. But that's what faith is. I'm going to step out in faith. We always say that. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to step out in faith. Oh, I'm going to do that in faith. Well, let's do it in faith. Let's show up hot for the Lord. On fire for Him. Not firing laser beams at some kid that's running amok because you know what's going to happen this week? Some kid's going to run amok. There's going to be muck running around the church. And if we pull out those laser beam lips and eyes and melt some poor kid to the ground, wow. Wow. So let me say what VBS is for is just as much for the kids as it is for the adults. 
to teach us, to train us, to show us, to tell us, to keep on keeping on. And Jesus Christ, I know your deeds. That's kind of scary, but it's true. He knows who we are. He knows our deeds or lack of deeds. He knows our heart or lack of heart. He knows if we're hollow or we're going to be helpers. He knows. And so right now, I'm challenging you. If you have put your name down on a list as VBS, and go, oh, I, oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, I got to show up. That's lukewarm. That's lukewarm. And your actions and your words are going to be evident this week when lukewarm comes out of you. Because Jesus Christ said, oh, then I wish you were neither, either hot nor, or cold. But you are neither. Hot or cold. Summertime, believe it or not, hot. A lot of times we go on mission trips and it's in the summer and we try to tell people, hey, guess what it's going to be today? Hot. So don't get up going, oh man, it's hot. That's what's going to happen. And we always try to program ourselves and the team, okay, let's get it out now. Let's say it's hot, it's hot, it's hot until we quit tired of, or tired of saying it's hot and we won't say it anymore. And in the wintertime, it's kind of hilarious. Oof. It's cold out there. Well, that's what happens in wintertime. It's, it's cold. There's ice sometimes, or there's snow occasionally. And so you try to find the balance, and, and that's okay in weather, but as Christians, we're not supposed to balance to lukewarm. Because lukewarm really means, eh, meh, meh. Lukewarm, not so hot, is another definition. Not so hot. Is that how you want to be known as a Christian and eh, not so hot Christian? I'm just a lukewarm Christian. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to be seen and somebody pick me to be in the choir or pray at the mic or be a leader or a teacher or a servant. No, no. I just want to be a lukewarm in the shadows, in the back, in the corner Christian. And that way when somebody comes up to me, oh, yeah, you bet I go to church. Uh-huh. What good is it that you go and you don't do? We have to be doers of the word as well. So because you're lukewarm in verse 16, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to, and your definitions are spit, spew, vomit, hurl, what, I'm, I'm getting rid of you. That's what Jesus, because you're lukewarm, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Because it's lukewarm. He's never called us to be. He's called us to be on fire. We say, well, that church is on fire. That group's on fire. They're on fire. He or she's on fire. How many times? Raise your hand. How many times have you heard, man, they're lukewarm for Jesus? God, look, look at that lukewarm church. Whew. Nobody wants to be known as the lukewarm church. We need to be hot or cold. One or the other. And if you so say that, hey man, for VBS, let's just be cold for Jesus this week. Let's just show them no emotions. Let's be ice cold for Jesus. And then we expect a bountiful harvest to come from that. No, let's be on fire for the Lord. Let's be passionate. Believe it or not, 24 hours from now, we'll be in the middle of VBS. 24 hours. Big kickoff. All the hoopla, the lights, the screaming, the running, all this stuff going on. And you know what? We always say this. We can't fail if we're following the Father. And we are going to be following Jesus Christ. So we can't fail. And that doesn't mean we all spread out hammocks and inflatable beds and go, we're just going to take a nap while Jesus does it all. Because we have to be on fire for the Lord. We have, if you're going to be up here singing, if you're going to be up here singing, give it all you got. You know, what if Cherie got up here and played lukewarm on the piano? Dun, 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 dun. You'd know she was sick. What if your surgeon was lukewarm the day of your surgery? Reschedule. I don't want no lukewarm surgeon going, okay, I'm ready if you are. I think we've got some medication to curb the pain. I don't know. Man, you want him to be on fire, on point, then why would we be anything less for Jesus Christ, our Savior that we proclaim we follow, to be lukewarm? No, because he says, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. 
And we have made this hot and cold thing pretty easy to understand. Uh, in our utility room, we've got a, a blue handle and a red handle that goes into the washing machine. It never fails. You can always seem to get those crossed. But that's why they made a blue handle and a red handle. Because red stands for hot. Hot. And have you ever been one of those that you absolutely did something that's like, ooh, that was hot. And it kind of surprised you. McDonald's is the best one. On their coffee cup it says, caution, contents, hot. Hot coffee. Kind of goes along with what it should be. I have never read one that says, caution, contents are lukewarm. I know it's a simple statement tonight, church, and I know maybe some of you are bored that this is not deep, this is not really what I came for, but understand this, if we get the simple things down, we've got the foundation ready for the complex. And let me tell you, come this week, it's going to be a complex VBS, because there'll be kids in different stages of their lives. There'll be kids who know the Bible verses, who are excited, who are polite, who listen, and then there'll be the tiny tornadoes. And there'll be all that we can handle and then some. There might even be a spill out in the fellowship, amen? There might even be one that's pushing. There might even be one that got shoved. There might even be a tear or two, a band-aid on the boo-boo. And you know what? We're ready for it all if we're hot for the Lord. But if we're lukewarm, we'll be unprepared, unready, unsympathetic, uncaring. And Jesus said, I'm just going to spit you out of my mouth. If that's the way you're going to be about me, I don't want you. Have you ever bitten into some food that was cold? Oop, oop. I thought that was, you, you're kind of eating away and it's cold in the middle when it should be piping hot. You don't like it, it's disappointing. Or maybe you put that Hershey's chocolate bar in the refrigerator and it's cold and you hear that snap when you, and you're going to say, I want to eat this, I'm not even going to share it with the pastor. Mm. But there are some things that we need to share with these kids. And that's a passionate, hot, fiery word, not flaming. But these kids need to know that we love Jesus. They don't need lukewarm, okay, here you are again, three hours of free babysitting. Man, I tell you, folks, if we look at it that way, we are a lukewarm church. If we see this as free babysitting, which I know, I know some people do, and we make that comment, man, it's another week of free babysitting. But you know what? We get the chance to mold a life, a life that could be changed forever, a life that could walk an aisle at some church at some point in time in his or her life saying, hey, at VBS on 2016, they had a circus. I learned about my faith and how to strengthen my faith. And that stuck with me. Because surely you in your life have heard from one of those Christians that said, hey, as a teacher, as a Christian, as a man or woman of God, you read a scripture verse to me. You, you prayed for me. And I never forgot that. Prayer is so powerful. Uh, if you haven't heard, Miss Sue Elrod has stepped into glory this afternoon. We'll be doing her funeral here. And you know what? I already talked to Deborah and I said, you know what's, what's going on? She says, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Doesn't matter, that's fine. Because mom's up in glory. And so to celebrate life, we're going to bring her in here and we're going to celebrate and lift her up and, and acknowledge that she's a Christian woman and her glory is being received right now in heaven. For all of eternity, she's in the presence of her Savior. And though we're sad in the flesh, we rejoice in the Spirit. Is another thing we say. We rejoice passionately, excited for where she is at and the purpose that she spent on this planet. We're not going to be lukewarm. We're going to celebrate. The same with this week. The same with when, it, when we talk about uh, my cup overflowing. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's a fiery, passionate scripture verse. My cup overflows. Ah, my cup's eh, lukewarm, half full, eh. Church, I think that's what's happening to us. We're satisfied with lukewarm. We're satisfied. So maybe next Sunday, we're going to have lukewarm coffee 
in every, every class. Okay, Kay? Lukewarm. Yeah. Lukewarm milk. Boo. No. No. We want hot. We want fiery hot. We want things that, that, that spur us on, that lift us up. And Jesus, and again, I'm going to wrap up, and we're going to pray for you and VBS and, and move on because there's still lots to do and decorating going on. But understand this. I'm going to remind you of the things that Jesus said. I know your deeds. You're neither hot nor cold. I wish, I wish you were either hot or cold. That's Jesus talking. He doesn't want you to be cold. He doesn't want you just to show up to church. And go, well, look, I'm, I'm here. It's no good if you're lukewarm in here. He said, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. And understand this. We, we understand what, what Jesus is trying to tell us. To be on fire as the church should be on fire. To be passionate and purpose-filled. To be a hospital for the healing. Okay? A hospital for the healing, not a place where we condemn the sick, but we heal the sick. That's a hot church, a church that's on fire for the Lord. We say that. And if we're, if we're ice cold for the Lord, then he's going to move on to a place that's hot for him, that's serving him, that's proclaiming him, that's recognizing him not only in his house but out. And so we've got a banner outside. We've had ads in the paper. We've been proclaiming, hey, it's coming. And so now I've got to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to be hot for the Lord this week? And hot for the Lord means passionate about those little kids that are kind of come in screaming and yelling and running and, you know, bubbling in your mouth, hands behind your back. We're going to march into onward Christian soldier. That won't be happening. The lights will be blasting. The music's going to be going. Kids are going to be jumping up and down because we want to be excited for what Jesus Christ has done for us and pass that excitement on to these other kids. So let me leave you a six. Because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth, which means there's hope. He hasn't done it yet. I'm about to. There's a chance, folks, for us to be hot for the Lord. There's an opportunity for us to be on fire for the Lord. Will we take it? Because if not, he's about to spit you out. Would you stand with me, please? Father, this evening on the eve of VBS, we're about to. We're about to touch lives. But Father, do not let us touch one life if we're lukewarm. Father, you said you're about to spit us out, which means there's, there's just a glimmer of chance that, that we can be on fire, that we can say, Lord, please don't. So let us be that church, Father. Let us be that one light that shines brightly. Give us that opportunity, Father, to be on fire as we say we are for you. Let us turn into an, from an ember to a spark, from a spark to a, a flame, a flame to a fire, a fire to a blaze. And let us touch these lives that will come in here. Whether it be one life or many, many lives, Father, let them see us on fire for you. Let, let us burn so brightly that they will come to watch us burn for you that that fire will draw them to you, not to us. I'm about to spit you out. Oh, Father, please give us that chance to show you that we are on fire for you. As we play and sing an invitation, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Come to us. Emblazon within us your spirit of purpose and passion. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's turn to page 305 in our hymnals. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, 
I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Church, that's what it's about. I hope we don't turn our back on anybody this week, and I hope we don't turn back. We march forward. We move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. There's lots going on. I think we'll be here a little while longer tonight. We've got church council and a meeting about that. If you're still decorating, we don't want to set the alarm if you're upstairs because that brings the police force here with their guns and dogs, and we don't want that. But uh, please let, make sure that you're out and everything's locked up. But tomorrow we'll be here. And uh, Again, I haven't talked with the, uh, Deborah Crutcher. don't know when the service will be, but we'll make this respectful and, and uh, do some shuffling around. Delane? Probably Wednesday at 1 here. Okay, so we will have the petitions, and those are here for a purpose, and move a couple things around. And so please lift up the Elrod family. And I think they'll be at Debbie and Deborah and Terry's house out on Level Land Highway. Okay, so lots going on. If you need help in your rooms or classrooms and decorations, Shannon's right here. She'll be happy to answer any questions you got.